Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and uh, uh, welcome back to this next video and this is another video in the uh, series of videos uh, on the uh, human genetics uh, in the last videos I've told you that the uh, mode of inheritance of genetic diseases is usually classified into five classes uh, one is known as the autosomal dominant the other one is known as the autosomal recessive uh, you have got the X-linked dominant genetic diseases you have got the X-linked uh, recessive genetic diseases and you have got the uh, mitochondrial genetic diseases so the genetic diseases are uh, broadly classified into these five classes in this particular video I'll be focusing on an example of the autosomal dominant genetic diseases and that particular disease is known as the Huntington's disease uh, so the first thing we are going to discuss is the uh, what is Huntington's disease. So the uh, Huntington's disease, uh, which is usually uh, abbreviated as HD. So through, throughout this particular video, I'll be using this term HD to uh, represent the Huntington's disease. So the HD is hereditary, progressive, neurodegenerative genetic disorders that stops part of the brain working properly over time and it uh, gets gradually worse over time and it's usually fatal after a period of up to 20 years now if you talk about the HD it is actually characterized by the uh, involuntary movements which is known as the chorea uh, there is lack of the coordination there is a cognitive decline and there are changes in the behavior or personality of the uh, patient I'll be uh, focusing on the uh, symptoms in detail in the next video but generally these are the symptoms of the Huntington's disease. So the symptoms of the HD they are the result of the loss of the neurons because this is a neurodegenerative disease that means there is loss of the neurons in the HD uh, and this loss of neuron is happening in certain regions of the brain and it usually developed in affected individual between the age of 30 and 50 years so it is mostly seen uh, in individual between the age of 30 and 50 years although uh, the juvenile onset Huntington disease is a type of the HD that affects the children but most of the time you will see the HD uh, in individual between the age of 30 and 50 years now is the Huntington disease as uh, I've told you it is an autosomal dominant genetic disease so it affects the men and women alike and you will see that when you will be discussing different scenarios that how this autosomal dominant disease uh, affect the men and uh, women alike uh, but there is a high frequency of the HD uh, in the uh, European descendants now if you talk about the western countries um, uh, out of 100,000 individuals about five to seven people they are affected by the uh, Huntington disease or the HD in this particular video I'll be mainly focusing on the uh, genetics of the HD how the uh, genetics of the HD that works as I've told you that HD is an autosomal dominant disorder so the first thing you need to understand what is autosomal dominant so these are two terms so one is the autosomal and the other one that is dominant when we use this term autosomal it means that the gene is present on an autosomal chromosome uh, when you talk about the human beings for example uh, the chromosomes are usually classified into two classes uh, one is known as the autosomes and the other one they are known as the sex chromosomes humans have got 23 pairs of the chromosome so the uh, pair from the uh, so the chromosome number one up to the chromosome number 22 they are known as the autosomes while the last pair is known as the uh, sex chromosome which contain the x and the y chromosomes so when you talk about the autosomal one it means that the gene that is causing that particular disease is present on an autosomal chromosome so it can be anywhere from the chromosome number one to chromosome number 22 so it will be present on an autosomal chromosome the dominant mean that only one copy of the abnormal gene is needed to cause the disease in an affected person and that can be inherited from either of that person's parent as we know that in the human beings uh, there are usually two copies of a gene so in case of the dominant only one copy of the abnormal gene is needed to cause that particular disease 
Now, if you specify this to the HD disease, so as we say that HD is an autosomal dominant one, in case of the HD, the gene which is responsible for the disease is known as the HTT gene. And uh, this is actually this gene is present on the chromosome number four. So it means it is an, uh, present on the autosomal chromosomes. Now the uh, HD gene or the HTT gene, it encodes an important protein which is known as the Huntington protein. Now in case of HD, there is mutation in this uh, HTT gene and this mutation is actually responsible for the uh, symptoms that you see in the uh, HD affected individuals. Now what happens is that uh, in the HD there is a mutation in the HTT gene and this mutation is actually the expansion of the CAG trinucleotide repeat in the HD gene. Now what this CAG trinucleotide repeat means that we are talking about a trinucleotide it means it will be made up of three nucleotides and the three nucleotides are the C, A and G. So this uh, repeat that you see in the uh, HTT gene is actually made up of the cytosine, the adenine and the guanine. Now in a uh, normal HTT gene what you can see is that there are about 10 to 35 times a repetition of this CAG trinucleotide but in case of HD it is like uh, more than 40 to more than 80 times. The next figure that is going to uh, make the things very clear. So uh, the gene uh, for the HD or the HDT gene that is present on the short arm of the chromosome number four. And if you see over here, here are the repeats, the CAG repeats. This is CAG, then CAG, the CAG, CAG and CAG. So there are these CAG repeats present in the HTT genes. Now you all know that the this uh, triplet or this codon, which is made up of the three nucleotide, it actually specifies an amino acid. Now this CAG codon, it actually codes for the glutamine. Now if you compare the normal HTT protein or the HT or the Huntington protein, uh, and you compare that with the abnormal Huntington protein, what you can see is that there is usually uh, there are usually uh, 36 or less glutamine residues that are produced by these CAG repeats. But as in the Huntington's disease, due to mutation, uh, the number of the repeats they are increasing. That means you'll be seeing more than 36 glutamine residues in the uh, Huntington's protein. Now, when the number of the glutamine that is increasing that means that the protein that will not be a normal protein and that will be an abnormal protein now if there is mutation in this particular protein what is going to happen then so uh, when you talk about these uh, mutated huntington proteins uh, they have a tendency to group together forming clusters within the neuron that are not easily removed by the brain enzymes now that means that some kind of the clusters they are formed by these mutated Huntington proteins and if they are not removed by these enzymes it means that these clusters they may play a role in the neurodegeneration which is seen in the HD for their accumulation in the brain is associated with the increased neurodegeneration so the normal Huntington protein is not accumulating in the neurons they are easily removed by the brain enzymes when their function is over but the mutated Huntington proteins they are accumulating in the neurons and when they are increasing in the when they are accumulating in the neuron that is going to lead to the neurodegeneration and when there is neurodegeneration that means that the parts of the brain that will be affected which will be uh, you can say uh, resulting in the symptoms of the uh, Huntington's uh, disease. Now what this Huntington protein normally do in the body? Now this Huntington protein is found in many parts of the body tissues but at highest levels they are present in the brain. Uh, within the cells this uh, Huntington protein it play a role in the chemical signaling it is involved in transporting materials. It is also responsible for attaching to protein and other substrates. 
it is protecting the cells from the apoptosis and it is very important for the normal development of the brain before birth so if the uh, huntington protein gets mutated you can clearly see all of these functions they are going to get affected and if they are going to get affected that means that the uh, uh, that particular individual will be getting the uh, huntington disease now this type of the mutation that we discussed that the expansion of the uh, repeats that can also be seen in other genetic diseases like the uh, fragile x syndrome uh, and it is generally anticipated that there is a direct relationship between the number of the repeats and the severity of the disease you can see that the larger the repeat size the more severe the symptoms are and the earlier the onset of the disease is there secondly these mutated alleles they have the tendency to uh, be genetically unstable and they undergo further expansion as they are transmitted to future generation increasing the disease severity in subsequent uh, generation and this particular phenomena is known as the anticipation now as i've told you that the huntington disease is uh, an autosomal dominant one and uh, so if you talk about the alleles there is uh, the diseased allele which is actually represented by the capital d and the normal allele is represented by the uh, small d allele so you, what you can expect is that if uh, an individual is getting uh, the both of the uh, capital d allele or both of the uh, diseased allele that particular individual will be affected secondly if the uh, individual is in the heterozygous condition as you can see over here there is capital d on this particular chromosome there is small d on this chromosome this is a heterozygous condition or in the other way you can see that this particular chromosome is having the small d or this particular chromosome is having the capital d so in both of these cases they are the heterozygous condition so all of these three cases they are going to be uh, this this particular individual are going to be affected because the disease is transmitted in the uh, autosomal dominant pattern the only form in which the huntington disease is not there is that you are getting both of the uh, normal alleles or the non disease alleles as you can see over here so if both of the alleles they are small d and small d you will be unaffected and this particular condition will be the recessive and this is very clear when you talk about the dominant condition we say that the dominant condition are expressing themselves in the homozygous as well as in the heterozygous condition and this is one of the uh, famous example of the uh, dominant condition now in the next video i'll be focusing on the uh, different scenarios uh, uh, how these uh, hd disease that can be transferred from the parent to the offspring now if you like the video uh, please subscribe to my channel hit the like button and share it with your friends